experimenters. I'm Seth Noir. The man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting is just seen Eddie Lowry. Ah, today we find gravity. The acceleration due to gravity. And we're going to look at this. We're going to have a pendulum. In other words, a metal ball attached to a very, very thin string. And it's going to oscillate back and forth. And from that, we can find the acceleration due to gravity with this. 4 pi squared L divided by the period squared. So L, L is going to be the length of the pendulum. In other words, from the top here where it's attached to the ceiling, all the way to the center of the bob. That's L. And then the period is, let's say I release this. And then it goes one way this way, and then it goes back the time it takes to go forward and back is one period. Okay, so let's go take a look at this and get our first value. All right, so let's look at this. This is our pendulum and it's attached to the ceiling. So the first thing we need to do is to find L. And to do that, we take a two meter long stick and I put one end where it's attached, and then on the other end, I try to read to the center of the pendulum to two decimal places if I'm in centimeters. All right, some things to keep in mind is it's helpful to have a second person looking at it perpendicular to you. In other words, to me, it's hard to tell if it's at an angle this way or an angle that way. So, I take that, there's one measurement. Then I do it again. A second time. Read again, that's measurement two. And then I do it again. I do it ten times in total. Try not to stretch the spring when you're measuring it. And let's see what we do with these ten times. Let's go. Let's go to this. Okay, so for our ten runs, we're going to find the mean, add the number of runs, divide by 10. Now the mean is what we'll use in the formula to find gravity. Standard deviation, some error analysis. Then the standard error, or otherwise known as the standard deviation of the mean, SDM. Standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of data points you take, in this case square root of 10. And then the fractional error, standard deviation of the mean, divided by the mean. Great! That's our first piece of information. Let's go find the period now. Okay. To find the period, we're going to find it first 25 individual times. Individual times. So because there are going to be 25 individual times, this is going to be T1. Okay. Now... We want to move this about 15 centimeters from its equilibrium position, and then we release it. And we don't have to start and stop this right away, but let's see here. So one again. Okay, there's one reading, uh, 2.82. I reset, and I'm ready for my second one. Okay, 3.00 on the spot. I do this 25 times. I'm ready for more statistics. Let's go. All right. Okay, so for these 25 runs, I find the mean S, SDM, and fractional error. And just like I said, because we're finding these for individual periods, we call this capital T1. So now we can find G1 using the mean for the L we found before and the mean of the period we just found. Awesome. There's our first value for gravity. We can do a little better than this. We can do a little bit better. A lot bit better, actually. If we take, instead of one run 25 times, what if we took 100 oscillations twice. That would seem to minimize the stopping and starting error quite a bit. Let's go do that. Let's go do that. All right. All right. This is where the bulk 
bulk of the experiment is going to happen. Some things to mention at first. In other words, we're going to be starting this and then stopping it after 100 complete oscillations. If you're like me, you have a hard time counting to 100. So here's some strategies. You could do the whole writing the lines and the what you might call it. And in other words, when you get to 100, you know you're done. You can stop the watch. Or you can use Excel. In other words, put the cursor in box one for, and then a period one. And then each period, just move it down. And then when you're at box 100, you know you've done 100 periods. You can stop the watch. Another thing to mention is if we want to keep theta small, why are, we me why are we bothering to bring it up 15 centimeters? That's because at the end of this, by the, by the time we get to near 100 periods, there's going to be damping from the air resistance. And these oscillations are going to become very, very small, perhaps too small to detect. So that's why we want to make it large enough that we can detect the later oscillations but not too big, so we can still use our small angle approximation. Okay, so now, when we start the watch, we've got to be careful. So in other words, I start here, but that's not one, that's one, two, three, and so on. Or another way we can do it is we can start at oscillation zero. In other words, right when I start the watch, it's oscillation zero. So we reset this. Zero. One. Two, and so on. Okay. All right. So now, let's see what this looks like in real life. Okay, so now, zero. One. Two. Three. All right, listen, neither of us know how to edit. We don't know what we're doing. We're just trying to make some movies to help you guys out. So with that said, 98, 99, 100. Awesome. Let's take this number and see what we can do with it. Okay. Okay. So we got to remember something, though. We want to take two of the same measurements of 100 oscillations. Now, when you take those two measurements, take the difference of them, and if they are more than 0 0.3 seconds apart, somebody's counting 100 again. All right, so now with the two measurements, we find the mean S and SDM. And just keep in mind, N, capital N is 2 for all of these, including here. So this is not divided by the square root of 100, it's divided by the square root of 2. But those aren't the ones we really want. We want the period, capital T100. So to get from these to these, we divide them all by 100. In other words, divide this by 100 to get this, this by 100 to get that, that by 100 to get that. And now that we have T100, we can now find a much better value for gravity. G100. Yeah. That should make you happy. That's a good value. And that's it. Congratulations.